Millions of years of torrential rains created great oceans. And swirling in the waters of the oceans is a bubbling broth of complex chemicals. Progress from a complex chemical soup to a living organism is very slow. Well, I guess it is. Totally stopped. Doesn't even happen. That's how slow it is. This guy said the first self-replicating systems must have emerged in this organic soup. So according to the standard evolution theory in the textbooks, 20 billion years ago, Big Bang, 4.6 billion years ago, the Earth cooled down. It rained on the rocks for millions of years and turned them into soup, and the soup came alive 3 billion years ago. So great, 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 grandpa was soup. Now, there's no question there are an awful lot of different varieties of dogs in the world, and I don't think there's a question they probably had a common ancestor, but it was a dog. That doesn't mean all the dogs came from a rock. Okay, 4.6 billion years ago. What evidence do they give to support this theory for evolution? The textbook says we've got evidence from fossils. Oh, now, come on. Any freshman law student can tell you no fossils could possibly count as evidence for evolution. You don't know those bones had any kids. Bring your bones into court. Hey, Your Honor, these, are the, these, are, these bones are the ancestors of everybody today. Yeah, right. You don't know those are the ancestors of anybody. I mean, a kindergartner ought to figure that one out. Evidence from structure, evidence from molecular biology, evidence from development. All the known, all the supposed scientific evidence for evolution has been proven wrong years ago. There is no evidence for the theory. Now, I don't mind if somebody wants to believe in it. This is America, the land of the fee and the home of the slave, or whatever. But um, <laughs> And if you want to believe in evolution, that's perfectly fine. Honestly, I don't care. But I, for one, resent them using my tax dollars to teach that dumb theory to the kids in school at taxpayer expense. They ought to go start their private schools. <clears throat> Evolution is based on two faulty assumptions. Number one, they assume that mutations will make something new and better. That has never been observed. Secondly, they will assume that natural selection makes it survive and take over the population. You see, in order for evolution to really work, if one animal evolves a little better than the rest, what must happen to the rest of them to make this work? Well, they've got to die. Evolution is a religion of death, not life. The question is very simple in my mind. Did man bring death into the world? Or did death bring man into the world? Because if evolution is true, death is the hero of the plot. Darwin understood that very well and said so on page 217 of his book. It's true that mutations happen. There's no question there. But mutations do not produce any evolution. This is a five-legged bull. That's a mutant. It's not, there's no new information. It's a scrambling of existing information. Same with the short-legged sheep. That's a mutant. But there's no new information. This two-headed turtle is a mutant. It's not ninja, but he's mutant. Um, <laughs> And he's going to freeze first winter because nobody makes a double neck turtleneck sweater. See, <laughs> mutations are a scrambling of information that is already existing. They're not going to create a thing. Um, this textbook shows a four-wing fly, and it says normal fruit flies have two wings. This mutant has four. This rare mutation, like most mutations, is harmful. Then it says beneficial mutations are the raw material for natural selection. Well, excuse me, why don't they give an example of a beneficial mutation? Because nobody's ever seen one. They show the kids a bad one, and there's plenty of those, but they never show a good one. One professor said, I know a good mutation. People in Africa that get sickle cell anemia cannot get malaria as easily. I said, well, that's, that's brilliant, sir. That's like saying if you cut off your legs, you can't get athlete's foot. <laughs> and by the way, that's always the one they bring up, okay? That's, that's all they've got. Textbook says evolution and natural selection go together. Oh, come on. Natural selection selects. It doesn't create anything. Creationists don't argue about natural selection. I think it happens. But it selects. It's not a creative process. This horse was artificially selected by humans down to get the smallest horse they could get. As far as they know, the smallest one in the world. Talk about useless. <laughs> See, natural selection is not a creative process. It doesn't create a thing. I taught biology. I'm not against biology. Natural selection works, folks, but it doesn't create it just selects. If you worked in a factory that made cars and you selected the good ones to go through and the bad ones to not make it out the, vote out the door, how long would it take that selection process to create an airplane out of that car? It's not going to do it, okay? You may get a big dog or a little dog, but you're going to get a dog. And probably the dog, the wolf, and the coyote had a common ancestor. I wouldn't argue about that. But every five-year-old kid knows they're the same kind. I do this all the time. I get a five-year-old kid. Okay, kid, here we got a dog, a wolf, a coyote, and a banana. Which one is not like the others? <laughs> they get it every single time, okay? See, the Bible says they bring forth after their kind, not after their species. Darwin wrote a book called The Origin of Species. Who knows? Nobody's ever given a good definition of what a species is. 
They say, well, a dog and a, dog and a wolf are different species. Yeah, but they can, still, they can still interbreed and produce puppies. So what is the good, hard, fast definition of species anyway? The Bible says it's the same kind, and that's where the argument ought to be held. Variations certainly happen, but they have limits. Farmers have been trying for years to get bigger pigs. Do you think they'll ever get a pig as big as Texas? <laughs> no. My whole point is there are limits. We have roaches in Florida, big ones. Roaches eventually become resistant to pesticides, but they will never become resistant to a sledgehammer. <laughs> we could spend hours on the resistance. I've only got a few minutes left here, but uh, uh, I grew up in Illinois, corn country. There are so many kinds of corn, they have to number them. You'll drive down the highway and there's BX65. You know, don't mix it up with XL29, something will explode. But I'll tell you what, folks, you can crossbreed corn from now until the cows come home and you're always going to get corn. You never get a hamster or a whale or a tomato to grow on your corn stalk, okay? Um, <laughs> variety of dogs. This Irish textbook calls it divergent evolution. Oh, come on. A poodle and a terrier coming from a wolf is not divergent evolution. Don't give it a fancy name. It's still a dog, okay? It's a variety of dog. And there are thousands of examples of variations that happen within the kinds. And creationists don't argue about that. Variations happen. But the point is, they're still the same kind, which is precisely what the Bible said would happen. Tomorrow is the Kentucky Derby. You know, in the last hundred years, they've gone from an average winning speed of 127 to an average winning speed of 123. Now, even in the old days, they got some good times turned in. How much money would you guess has been spent on the Kentucky Derby trying to get faster horses? Now, I don't know if they reach the absolute limit for horse speed or not, but I suspect they're getting kind of close. I mean, if you really want to win the Kentucky Derby, why don't you breed wings on your horse and fly around the track in 12 seconds? Hmm? <laughs> the whole point is, variations happen, but they're limited. This, tech, this, this magazine, you can order chickens. What kind you want? Red rocks, white rocks, cherry eggers, brown leghorns. And then it says, jungle fowl are the original bird from which all varieties and strains of domesticated chickens are derived. Did you know all the chickens had a common ancestor? It was a chicken. Creationists don't argue. Variations happen. God created an incredible gene code in each of the original kinds of animals, and they can produce a wide variety of offspring. Some of them can live in the cold weather, and some can live in the hot weather. And they probably had a common ancestor. No argument. But that's not evolution. Tonight you're going to hear three different opinions. Tonight, the right one, which you just heard, and then two others. Uh, God created this world in six literal days. He made it with the animals with a variety to produce an incredible variety of offspring. Then he destroyed this world with a flood. And the Bible teaches he's going to come destroy it again one of these days, pretty soon. And if you're not ready for that, you ought to get ready soon. Thank you. The second of our opening statements on the subject and matter of how did we get here and when did we arrive is Kyle Frazier. Kyle. Yes, yes. Wow, well, what a hard act to follow and especially seeing all you raise your hands and realizing that we're in quite a bit of a minority here. I would just uh, like to start out by saying a, a brief thank you. Um, in, you, in particular to you for your kind attention and um, I would also like to show my or say my appreciations to uh, Drs. Hovind and Dr. Shermer uh, for, uh, for attending here tonight. I hope you understand after preparing for this and this is the first such event like this for myself I can honestly say I've never worked for anything any harder in my life and still feel totally unprepared so um, I'll just have to You'll just have to accept that uh, the amount of time and sacrifice that they took to be, to be here and participate was a significant sacrifice. Second, I would also like to thank my um, science advisory team, Jeff McCallum, Paul Nyhus, and Walter Remine, whom you may meet at our book, tour, our book table in the back. Um, uh, I would like to start out just kind of by clarifying the purpose of debates. I, know, I don't know about you guys, but um, I've been to a few d debates in my life, and I always kind of went there thinking, well, you know, when I get there, I'm going to find, you know, we're going to um, change. Somebody's going to get up there and it's going to change a lot of people's views. And um, the hope is, is that, um, you know, you people go with me.